girl last time I could feel that power in my hands The beat of the drums rushing through my skin Welcome to the Copa Bowl. The rivalry continues. It's game time. This is Friday Night Basketball, Sky Sports. Oh, and here he is at the other end. Let's go. Showtime. It's the London Lions versus the Leicester Riders. What a matchup we have for you in just the second week of this new BBL campaign. The Lions looking to challenge the Riders' recent dominance. Not to mention avenge their loss in last season's playoff finals. We'll learn a lot about both teams tonight in the capital. A very good evening to you from a packed copper box. What a game this promises to be. Delighted to say that Drew Lasker, Kira Nachara present and correct. Drew, are we seeing the two best teams in the BBL right now? Well, if I remember correctly, they were the last two teams in front of 16,000 at the 0-2. So until anyone else proves they can knock them off their total pole, they got to be. I saw the Lions last week, of course, looking incredibly composed. Just how impressed were you with their performance against the Sharks game? I was very impressed. And not only that, they, they were late for the game. I think they had problems on, on the motorway. They showed up, no warm-up, and, and showed how dominant they could be. They've had a bit more warm-up tonight <laughs> by, the, by the look of things. It's interesting, a lot of new faces for the Lions, a lot of all-star names brought in. Perhaps one of the most surprising things about last week was how cohesive they looked from the get-go, Drew, because that's not easy. Yeah, I was very surprised to be honest, but this is a Lions team that's not from the zoo. They're from the African safari. The way they pounced on the prey of the Sharks last week was unbelievable, and they're the, the tightest I've seen them since 2017, the last time they won the chip. There's a lot of change with London. Uh, the champions bringing back the majority of their uh, title-winning roster, with a notable exception of Gino Crandall, the reigning MVP, which is going to make that title defense a little bit harder. And that defense gets underway tonight. This is Leicester's first league game, but they have played in Europe, a loss and an early exit in the Champions League. Some other teams, well, they've doubled down already. Cheshire, Manchester and Sheffield have all played twice with mixed results. Newcastle, they start their campaign tonight at home against the Giants. And the Caledonia Gladiators, formerly the Glasgow Rocks, play their first game on Sunday when they host Surrey. Secure and exciting times for your old team. Very exciting. The only problem I'm having right now is remembering it's the Gladiators and not the Rocks. <laughs> yeah, I agree. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to see the programme moving in the, the direction it needs. It's, it's very ambitious. No plans for an arena. Merging the, the women's squad with the men's squad to be under the one umbrella. I, I'm just really, really excited to see it moving in the right direction. Look forward to seeing them in action this season. Now, our game tonight is a rematch, as Drew suggested, of the playoff final back in May at the O2. And what an afternoon that was. The Leicester Riders will play the London Lions in the season finale. The playoff crown would complete a season treble for Leicester. Standing in their way are London, many people's favourites at the start of the campaign, but they're still looking for their first title of the season, so it is all or nothing. Reese going the opposite way to the screen, takes the three, makes the three. Oh my goodness, Gina Crandall, that is incredible. Washburn putting it on the floor, dumps it off to Tawia, hammers it down two-handed. These are the best moments right here. There is no replication of this. High stakes, the pressure, it's great to see both of these teams going at it. Dirk Williams to the hold. Crandall. With the jump shot, top of the key, all string. With just a couple of seconds left to force overtime. Oh, it's blocked straight to Crandall, who runs away. And the Leicester Riders have won the treble. The Leicester Riders race on court to celebrate. What an amazing game of basketball. And the Riders are the champions. And just seeing how much Gino Crandall featured in that package, how brilliant he was in that game, demonstrates how... Uh, big a gap uh, that is for Leicester. We'll talk about how they're going to fill that in a minute. But just, Drew, I want to ask you about that feeling, winning the playoffs final. How special is that particular trophy for a player to win? 
Well, Karen would know anything about this, but, um, you know, it's debatable of which trophy is the most important. But when you win that playoff final, you go into the sunset of the offseason. The food tastes better. The beer tastes a little bit colder. And you just get, you just feel good the entire summer. So something you can't really explain. So I'm sorry, Karen. I don't know why you keep on asking him to talk I about I just you. wanted that experience. Oh, look at me. I look just, at Drew. I thought look he'd come into that. His low blow was all of his own accord. <laughs> In terms of the, oh, we heard that in, in comms with Dan, the Riders winning the treble, London starting last season with so much promise, so much aspiration and finishing it trophyless. How much do you think that motivated this, this, this recruitment drive that we haven't really seen anything like it before in the BBL, have we? I, I think, you know, when I, when I think of the London Lions, their focus is being the best in Europe. You know, they're, they're not thinking about the BBL. I think the byproduct will be that, but they have to give more respect to the league. And they, they went and recruited players who are going to be committed, no distractions, focused on basketball, because they have to take this league seriously when you have teams like Leicester Riders. Well, you mentioned Europe. They've assembled a big roster because they're battling on a number of fronts. A lot of Team GB talent, the return of Obi Soko, Mo Soloade, Luke Nelson, and that has been balanced with some top NBA and European experience in Costa Kufos, a former first-round draft pick in the NBA, 10 years in the NBA as well. How impressive was he last week, Drew? Very. I think Kieran summed him up perfectly last week about his patience down low. His footwork is amazing for someone of that stature of seven feet tall. And like I said last week, he said to us that he played terrible. So I would like to see what he plays like with a proper warm-up. <laughs> On a good down warm-up, right. All-time uh, Czech top scorer, a national team legend, Wojciech Hurban. We didn't see him last week, uh, Kieran. Uh, very excited to see him in action. What can we expect from him? You know, he's going to be able to make shots. When I, when I think of the prototypical European player, you know, great ball movement off the ball, on the ball, really attack-minded, but he's got a great shot. He's going to really stretch the floor and cause a lot of problems for other defences. Didn't see him last week. Did see Sam Decker, another former NBA player, another former first-rounder, incidentally. He was our MVP in the game against the Sharks. 23 points, four boards, four assists. And Kieran, he was the catalyst for so much that we saw from the Lions. I just love his composure. Like, even in this move right here, he knew exactly where he wanted to get to. You know, he set himself up, that little Euro step here as well. He can finish in multiple ways. I think he's a, he's a team player, but he can also produce. And that's, that's always a deadly thing to have when you can play on the ball as well as off. Now, on to the riders. We've talked about the loss of Gino Crandall. Back-to-back -back MVPs for him in the BBL. And I guess one of the toughest things, Drew, was the riders thought they'd retained him. It looked like they announced that he was going to stay with them. And then a month later, he was off. Yeah, he went off to greener pastures, and I'm really happy for Gino because he done everything that he needed to do in this league. He won the MVP twice, so now he's taking his talents on to bigger and better. And the Leicester Riders just have to reload like they normally do. I think they'll be fine. It's been difficult for them, though, because they brought in CJ Jackson initially as the replacement, but he's had to leave uh, the organization through injury. So Derek Thornton is the next man up. Yeah, and I saw them in the European campaign, and, and I was really concerned with the Leicester Riders if they had to move forward with CJ. Um, but looking at this, uh, at Derek, his resume looks unbelievable. He played at USC, he played at Duke, and I watched a few clips. He got a little bit flashed, kind of got a little Geno inside him, so I think the Leicester Riders are in great hand. You're enjoying that swagger. How challenging is this going to be for him to jump into a big prime time game like this, Kieran? You know what? I'm sure Rob won't put that pressure on him. You know, it's, it's kind of, he's thinking about the, the bigger picture, you know. But Rob is such a great recruiter. I'm sure Leicester Riders will be just fine. Didn't have Patrick Whelan, the rider, for a lot of the preseason. He's good to go now. We'll see him tonight. He emerged last season as one of the strongest players in the BBL. What has made him such a top player, Kieran? Well, he's, he shot the ball exceptionally well. He plays defense, he's strong, and he got to the basket. And it was a great finisher around the basket. What I was loved about his game is he's now a part of the GB squad. He's now played in a Euro basket. He's played with a top-level competition. So he's only going to get better. Unfortunately, he picked up an injury. Uh, it looks like he's shaking that off. I'm excited to see what year two looks from in the BBL. We talk about the change or the new faces with the Lions. You mentioned the recruitment calibre of Rob Padanoska. We've seen it so many times over the years. So that's an interesting dynamic, isn't it? On the one hand, all of this top talent and a deep roster for the London Lions, but the cohesion and the consistency of a returning riders unit. And that's that's going to have to be the riders' unique selling point. You know, it has to be that cohesion that they have. They've already got that year under their belt. So they're used to... You know, the, the different ways of refereeing, the different travel, you know, exception. 
they've already acclimatised to that. So London Lions are still teething for them through that situation. So I think that's where the riders definitely have an advantage. All right, let's hear from both of tonight's coaches. Drew caught up with them a little bit earlier on. Coach, great win last week. What's the mood in the camp after the game one performance against Sheffield? I, we're, we're doing well. It was a, Obviously, it's always nice to get a win under your belt to open the season. Um, more importantly, it was just good to, to get our guys together for another week of, of practice. And again, we know we got a tough game tonight, but it's, it's still September, so we're trying to build you know game to game and week to week. And what's been the focus in your team's preparation this week? A lot of it's just trying to clean up a lot of our stuff offensively. You know, I think the biggest thing you notice from the preseason for us is just trying to get all these guys to gel. You know, they've all come from different clubs and played different roles. So I think for us, trying to get that, that cohesion on the offensive end has been a big focus for us. And do you see this matchup as a measuring stick to your domestic campaign? 100%. I mean, anytime you get a chance to play the defending champions, it's a good chance to kind of see where you're at as a team. You know, they return the majority of their team, and they're extremely well coached. So at the end of the day, this is a, a really good opportunity for us to kind of see where we're at early in the season, and, and we know it's going to be a tough battle. Rob, first competitive game domestically. How's the preparation been? Yeah, pretty good. I think that um, after we came back from uh, Macedonia, uh, we had a really good week of practice. Uh, you know, guys are uh, itching and ready to go. I thought uh, yesterday was an excellent practice. So the nice thing about this group is the preparation is always on point. Uh, they're professional and they're dedicated to that part of the game. And three trophies in the bag last season. What's the expectations this season? I don't really know. You know, we'll have to see how the league plays out. I think that until we see, um, you know, the league a little more, a couple months in, then we can look at where we're at. But um, for us, it's always the same thing. we got to be better at the end. I think we got to make sure that we don't peak too early. we got to be a team that uh, is playing its best basketball in May. And nine returning players, but a switch at the point guard position. What can you tell us about your new acquisition? Well, first of all, C.J. Jackson was here. He was injured when he came, and he never really got over that. And I feel for him because he's an excellent player. but wasn't able to, to bring it. But um, our new acquisition, Derek Thornton, he's a guy that uh, can get out in open spaces and eliminate defenders. I think when you look at his pedigree, he's played at a high level. I thought last year he had a really good season. And I think he's a guy that um, certainly can make our offense tick. And facing a team full of talent tonight, your thoughts on the Lions? Well, I mean, you know, they're a team that uh, I haven't seen in my time in the BBL. I haven't seen this type of firepower. I haven't seen anywhere near this type of spending on the team. Um, so, you know, we expect them to be very good on paper. But watching them last week, I was really impressed with how they played together. I thought they played really good team basketball. I know they had a travel nightmare on the way up, and it showed a real good strength within the team, I thought, to win that game. Thanks for your time, Rob. Good luck tonight. Thank you. I think it's fair to say that Coach Padalostro has seen a lot in his time. So if he's turning around and saying, Kieran, he's never seen a roster assembled like this, that, that's big talk. He isn't lying. You know, they are so deep. And at all positions as well. It's going to be relentless at both ends of the court for any, any team that they, they face this year. So, again... They're, they're just a, a, a non, I can't even use the word, but they're in a different stratosphere. Different level. And we talked last season, pretty much at this time last season, we might have even been here, about the expectation levels for the Lions because of all of their new signings. This is definitely Drew a level up. Is that going to be their biggest asset or their biggest challenge, keeping all of these players happy? Yeah, most definitely. But I, I, I didn't see anything last week that I'm concerned about. Like we mentioned at the top, the way they handled the adversity of getting in late. This group looks the most professional that I've seen from any London Lions group in a long time. All right. Uh, we have only just started the season, but this could be a matchup that is instrumental in the title race at this early stage. Tip-off coming next. Hey, yo! It's showtime. This is BBL Basketball live on Sky Sports. We are the London Lions, the Leicester Riders. You better know our name.
We're ready to get this one underway at the cover box, so I'll hand over for the first time this season to Antro and Dan Rattridge. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, let's get straight into the starting five for tonight's game as uh, two of the powerhouses in the BBL go head-to-head -head and notable for the Lions, Urban, who didn't play last week in the team this week straight in the starting five. He's a new addition there uh, in, in, with the subtraction of Aaron Best, but you've still got Kukos in the centre and Sam Decker with a superstar status. And if we look at the Leicester Riders, Connor Washington starts at the point guard position. You always know he's going to give you a good game. He was excellent in the Champions League qualifier, 14 points, 4 assists for him. Look for him to propel and lead his team tonight. Well, the two teams are out on court and we are ready to get things underway here. In the copper box, we have the champions against the team everybody thinks is going to surpass them. Let's see how it plays out on the hardwood. And it is the London Lions who get the opening offense. Nelson going against Connor Washington. Nelson back to Decker. Cooper strolling to the basket, he's jamming in the first points of the game. Well, take Polis advantage of having that 7 4 on court. Really nice pick and roll there from with Sam Decker and Kukos. Drag the defense out, and Kukos has an open dunk. Washington. He goes the opposite way to the screen, top of the key for two, Connor Washington. Great use of the pick and roll this time, didn't use it. Found that space in the defense and hold up, took the jump shot. Good start for Connor Washington. This time the pick and roll to Soko with the throwdown. Wow, two offenses and two interior passes from the London Lions splitting the Leicester Riders defense early. To Washington. Inside to Nelson Henry. Washington late in the shot clock. Needs to go to work here. Kicks it on to Whelan. Off the ball. And who that touch last? Nelson Henry. So it'll be a London ball. A relatively good stand there from the London Lions. Wasn't exactly a, a crisp movement of the basketball from the Leicester Riders trying to utilize that pick and roll. Didn't get really anything from it. And Patrick Whelan was forced into contested three there with a well, very little left on the shot clock. Top of the key, Kufos, off the ball, Washington with the rebound. Well, that could be a potential mismatch down there with Obisoko and Zach Jackson. Obisoko about four or five inches the bigger. Washington takes the three. And off the front of the eye. Doesn't go down, but I think that's okay for the Leicester Riders. So close to the finger roll. That's what you need, London Lions pushing the basketball before the Leicester Riders even have a chance to turn around and set up on defense. Here comes Washington for Leicester. Washington to Nelson Henry. And just a miscommunication between him and Whelan. Whelan was going baseline. Nelson Henry wanted him to stay in the corner. It's one of those ones as well. You don't know where who's in the wrong because Patrick Whelan does the right thing. He's, he's reading the game. He cuts at the right time. But also Patrick Whelan is a 40% three-point shooter. All the way to the rim. Decker for two. Well, we saw his talent that we last week. Ability to keep composure, his skills. And that came off the... Uh, foot of Mark Loving and out of bounds and London will get the ball back. Up 8-2 already. And this is where the Leicester Riders are going to dig deep. And this is something they did really well last year. Good hands from Loving. That would have been another dunk for Soko. Well, good recovery there. And Riders were really good at this last year. It's keeping composure even through, you know, going through the storms. Whoever in the storms when things weren't going your way. A lot of time left in this game. You don't want to get flustered too early because this is a London Lions team that can really put games away early. Decker inside to Kufos. Two running hook and drops it in for two. That high low Decker to Kufos is proven deadly. Nice entry pass and get the ball that deep. Kufos will finish the play. 
Jackson turns the corner, drives in, gets to the glass, but can't finish. Dakar into Soko. Soko off balance. Rebound pulled in by Sam Decker. Looking to get along the baseline. Finds the room. What a finish. And a great stop for the London Lions. Up 10. Inside four minutes left to force into a timeout. Goodness me, the energy there. The second chance opportunity. And that finish. Try baseline and reverse finish from Sam Decker. Almost trick shot level. Rob Padanostro forced to uh, halt the contest here. 12 points uh, to two, his team trail. A little unhappy, feels that he didn't quite get a call or two perhaps, but we see what the London Lions can do here in the opening uh, three or four minutes. But well, it's the energy as well. Leicester Warriors trying to make something happen on offense. They haven't had anything from those initial two points that they've got. Then the Lions have contested everything and then reversed it straight away. Well, before the game, we caught up with the Riders uh, captain, Darian Nelson. He says more of the same this season. Absolutely. Uh, consistency is something we pride ourselves on. You know, uh, obviously we have won the championship the last two years in a row and we'd like to continue that and I think uh, the championship is the best um, you know denominator for uh, stability and consistency and you know hoping to see more of that this season and speaking of championships is there added pressure as the team to beat uh, absolutely but you know since I got here uh, three seasons ago I'm going into my fourth I think we have been one of the teams to beat the entire time I've been here we're used to playing with a target on our back and I think it actually helps us you know we know that we're never gonna have any walk walk through games well, it certainly hasn't been a walkthrough game so far here at the Copper Box. Wheeling. Under pressure. Here's the whistle. And he got his teammate landing on his head as well. He'll go to the line for two. Good response there from the Riders out of the timeout. Rob Paternostro wanted his team to be more aggressive and attack the rim. And Patrick Wheeling did exactly that. Well, it's been a great start to the contest. Drew Lasker has joined us uh, in commentary. The London Lions showing what they're about here in the first four minutes. Yeah, what I've seen is the Leicester Riders, who were the best defensive team last year, I've never seen this many mistakes from them, in, in particular in the ball screen coverage. But on the other side, Sam Decker coming off the ball screen now with two assists, drawing out two, two defenders. This shows you the level of his play. Converts both from the line. Nelson. Here's Decker. Soko at the top of the key. Has the size over Whelan, trying to bully his way to the basket. Overcooks it. Kufas at the second chance. Pops it in. That's where riders are going to have to be mindful of those rebounds. They cannot allow those second chance opportunities. Loving with the early shot, too long. And that's why I worried about the riders on the offensive end. You losing out on Gino Crandell. He, he was a guy that set the table for these other guys. Connor Washington isn't known as that. He's more of a scorer from this position. So it's going to be interesting to see where they get their points from tonight. Nelson Henry, love it, looks to attack along the baseline, it's got to go up here, Jackson gets it away, Jackson hits the three on the shot block buzzer. Big shot and big patience there, but you even see the dynamics of the defense there, Kufel's being in that center, it makes the player second guess attacking the rim, having that seven foot figure in your way, but Zach Jackson that time knocks it down with very few seconds left on the shot clock. Well, foul is called there uh, on Zach Jackson. Pardon me, Dan, but and to pick up on your point, not only is Koof is seven feet tall, I'm pretty sure he has a wingspan of seven feet as well. So any guards looking to penetrate, get inside the paint, you're going to always second guess yourself. Both teams shuffling the pack. Koof is sitting down for the London Lions. Nelson throws it away. Loving has it. Numbers here for Leicester. Good pass to Wheeler, who's fouled but can't quite get the roll. 
he'll shoot two. Wow, that's the guy you want in the open floor. Last season, that is a guaranteed and one. Patrick Whelan, someone who is recovering from injury, coming back. Great push to the basketball off that initial turnover. Patrick Whelan, you can see the frustration on his face. Just doesn't get it to go. Well, really uh, grew into the tournament in Eurobasket in the summer for Great Britain. But in that final game, picked up an ankle injury, didn't play at all in the preseason. Did play in the Champions League game, but didn't really look his usual self. He's still working his way back to full fitness. And you're talking about a guy that if he had won the MVP award last year, no one would have blinked an eye. So he had an incredible season last year. Here's Decker for the Lions. Subchic kicks it out to Van Oostra. Decker again. Shot clock down to five. Creates a shot for himself. Rebound win. That's really good defense there for Mark Levin. You see him in increase the pressure there, which made Decker force that shot that half a second, uh, well, split second faster than he typically would. Cross court to Lovett. Lovett forced back out. Adekoya. Time running low on the offense. Adekoya takes the shot and misses. Nelson sees a lane, kicks out to the corner, Zubchic for three! That's just great work from Luke Nelson. I don't think the defense was set up properly there. Luke Nelson knew that, took advantage of it, penetrated and found Zubchic in the corner for the three. Great look. Loving is bumped by Zubchic on the floor, so that will be... Uh, an end line ball. And speaking of the Leicester Riders offense, I think Mark Levin is going to have to carry a huge load. If we think about it to last season, he had a great year up until March, and then all of a sudden he disappeared. If we think about the playoff final, he had two or four points. So he's going to have to step up his game and get back to the Mark Levin that we saw at the first half of the season. Washington with the three on the inbound. Comes down in Adekoya's hands. And a coil out to Walker. Great head fake. Mo Walker drives to the basket and takes the foul. That's great job from Mo Walker. And we've seen this time and time again him being entered into a basketball game and made an e immediate impact. And that's what you'd want from your big pump fake there. Hard move right. Gets the other big and Sharma to commit the foul. But we talk about the experience of the league. If you're experienced, you're not leaving your feet off Mo Walker there from 15 feet. So Josh Sharma just has to be a little bit more disciplined and know the scouting report. And Walker was also very influential in that Champions League game. Ended in defeat for Leicester. He was that. He's one of the best players. 13 points, six rebounds, and he was that positive piece they could go to down low. Van Oostra. He's Queen. Kicks it out, Zubchic. This time he's flushed off the three-point line. Foul is called on Adekoya. I thought that was a relatively good recovery from Adekoya there. And you have to honor that. You have to honor that pump fake because Zubchic has hit that three in the corner. And, hey, I think I saw it right first time. There wasn't a lot in there on the replay. Coily trying to get it in. Lottie gets it back, fires up the three, and hits! Wow, two-man game stuck in the corner there. Thought the ball was very stagnant, but they created space in that two-man game, and also Lottie knocks down the three. And that's a difficult shot with you just entering the game. Walker trying to use his size. Oh, nice footwork as well from Mo Walker. With the left hand, that is a nice play by Mo Walker there, posting up the seven-footer and Joe Sharma. Van Oostrum leaves uh, Washington on the floor and hits the three. Flying threes from everywhere on the court from the London Lions right now. Perfect from behind the arc, London. Bowman gets himself into trouble. Zubchic knocks it away. Meanwhile, there's a technical foul ball on Rob Padanostro. He was very unhappy 
that uh, Washington wasn't given um, uh, an offensive foul against Van Oostrom on the previous play. And that's the call that was coming, guys. You saw that from the first two minutes of the game. Rob has, has been on the refs, and, and from his perspective, he's looking at it like, I have the, probably the five most talented players in the league here on the court. They don't need any assistance from the refs, so I can feel his pain. Well, it's Van Oostrom who will go to the free throw line for the technical. There's some discussion at the table from uh, with the referee. Not quite sure what they're trying to clarify. Well, whatever it is, it's been resolved. Van Oostrom can shoot the technical foul shot and we'll go back to where we were and he converts the most impressive thing about both of these clubs as we mentioned there at the top is their depth is seven out of their ten players that's on the floor right now are coming off the bench so that could probably start for any other team in the BBL Washington, well, they see the shot clock because obviously it doesn't reset in that situation. Out to McKenzie, fires up the three and knocks him down. Good time awareness there for both of the guards. Connor Washington penetrates just to get the defense to shuffle and Kimball McKenzie straight away stepping into that three. Really. Round to Van Oostrom. Somebody from behind the arc and miss one. First uh, miss of the game for the Lions from behind the arc. Another offensive rebound though. They nearly got the second offensive rebound on that play. But, oh, it's turned over in the end by Adekoya. Zubcic is out in front. Zubcic jams it in. And that's what Blessed Warriors cannot allow is those turnovers. And that will be turnover number four for the team. Van Oostrom knocks that loose, gets a slap of five from his coach for the defensive effort. Here's Zubcic out in the court. We've seen so many dunks already in this game for the London Lions. And I love that high five there by Coach Ryan. Focused on the defensive end. They put up 28 points this quarter, but that's not his concern. He's concerned with getting it down, done down here on this end. Unless they had crossed the line, which is why it is in eight seconds on the first play. Ball was deflected into the backboard. The foul is caught on Sharma as McKenzie drives to the basket. Kupos quickly runs to the table to come in for Sharma, who's picked up his second. I like that play from Kimball McKenzie attacking mentality get the referee to call the foul when the game is feeling like it's uh, going that way you don't want it to go Kimball McKenzie slowly and surely keeping his team as a chance here to cut the lead well you know when you're struggling offensively the best place to get is layups and free throws as Leicester Riders have shot six shooting um, free throw number eight here in the first quarter the second six of eight from behind the line A minute to go here in the opening quarter Van Oostrom. behind the back to Kupos gets all the way to the rim somehow but can't put it in Wheeling for three in and out for Patrick Wheeler. Wow, you don't get any closer than that. And that comes from the previous play where the defensive possession, they got the stop and were able to push the basketball. An Eastern shot rims out as well. Shot clock is on. There's about a four second differential, maybe five between the shot and game. Here's Walker again backing down. Spinning the opposite way underneath. Great play again from Mo Walker. Again with the left hand. Mo Walker, no matter who they put on them, is able to be patient, get to his spot, and finish with the soft touch. Van Oostrom, nice pass. It doesn't quite go and the buzzer. And that will do it for a first quarter in which London Lions have scored at will here. 
They lead by double figures, plenty for Rob Paternostro to think about in this first quarter break. We're at the end of one at the uh, Copper Box in London. The Lions 28, the Riders 18 will have the second quarter after this break. Welcome back to the Copper Box where the London Lions lead by 10 here after the opening 10 minutes. Leicester with the possession arrow to start the second quarter. Bowman along the baseline, kicks out to Wheeler, hits the three. It's a good offense there, patience and good penetration on the baseline from Bowman to create that space, an opportunity for his teammate Patrick Wheeler who knocks it down. And Whelan is a guy, he's not going to miss too many of those. Great look by Patrick. Well, there was a game here last season, I think he was like 6 of 7 or 7 of 8 from behind the arc. Really towards yes. the Lions. Good work from Bowman to tip that loose. Here's McKenzie. McKenzie driving hard, just didn't quite get the finish. And that's going to be a foul on Bowman. As Van Oostrom got the rebound, Bowman just sort of bumped him out of bounds. Good intent from Kimball McKenzie, just didn't have enough lift there. The final release of the shot was required, but again, good attitude, it's aggressive and it's fearless mentality, and that's what the Riders are going to need on the offensive end this evening. Agreed. I think it's one of them where he was thinking a foul was going to come, and he was almost anticipating contact. Here's Van Oostrom, kicks out to Queeley. A Leicester boy, of course, Queeley driving all the way to the ring for two. That's where the scout report comes in as well. Kimmel McKenzie just bit a little bit on that pump fake. Green Queeley's not a, a natural, pure three-point shooter. He's a creator and a penetrator. Wheeler gets to the elbow. Kupas pulls down the rebound. Zubchich. Sure. Zuc just looks at the ref there, seems frustrated. Adekoya, we've seen time and time again, he likes the opportunity to guard the bigger player, doesn't he? Those hands, those physical prowess he has. Walker this time against Kufos. He's had his way with pretty much everybody. Not this time. 
That's great defense there by the seven footer standing his ground. Zawade for three, knocks it down. Another triple for the London Lions. Mo Salawadi, of course, from London. He hasn't got to play back home in a very long time. You can see he's enjoying it. Second three pointer of the season for him. Mackenzie back to Wheeler. Walker again tries to cross court pass and Quiz in that passing lane to deflect it out of bounds. Five on the shot clock. And that's a play we saw very often from the Leicester Riders last year, that dribble weave action that ended up usually in a Geno Crandell, Mo Walker, or Nelson Henry ball screen there at the middle of the floor. Whelan just stepped on the line. Oh, no, actually, it was an illegal screen, my mistake. It was a foul on uh, Nelson Henry. Oh, wow, I think the Riders would rather have a foot out of bounds and get the six foot ten center, Nelson Henry, to pick up his first foul this evening. Irvine. Gets all the way to the rim for the finger roll. Just glides and slides to the rim, doesn't need that pump fake, creates that space he needs. and it's in that gap and easy two for him there. So nice. It's unusual for someone of that size to be that slippery. Jackson somehow gets the shot to go. That's an incredible play. Lost the handle. Seemed to regain possession and throw it in the air. Tough finish from Zach Jackson. Zuchic doesn't get the roll off the glass. Kenzie driving hard, a little too strong this time. Quealy mows down McKenzie, and that will be an offensive foul. And that's great defense there by McKenzie, getting his chest out in front of the Que of the Quealy drive, drawing the offensive foul. Great call. He will sit down now, McKenzie, as Washington returns. London shuffling the pack again as well. Jackson. Here's Washington. Back to Jackson. Cross court to Loving. Loving spinning into the lane. And he's fouled as he kicks it out to Zach Jackson. Foul is on over Soka. Good penetration there from Mark Loving. And he's one of the guys who said, Drew, he's going to have to create for not only himself, but his teammates as well. That's the play there. Clear foul. You'd want him to chuck it up there so he can get back to the line. Leicester Wallace did a relatively good job. Six, uh, six of eight from the free floor at the moment. So they've been getting there. And Mark Lovin is certainly one of those guys that has the ability to, to, to put those numbers up too. Nelson Henry bumped by uh, Kufos. His first. It's a great test from Nelson Henry. Nelson Henry, six foot ten, typically one of the bigger players you'll see on court in the BBL. All but now, this London team will have seven footers being thrown at him. And as you see, that bump, Kufos didn't move very that far when they were no, no, yeah. to bump him there. Well, I'm impressed with him and Mo Walker not backing down from the challenge of the seven footers. Usually you would say face up, but they're going to their strength, backing these guys down, trying to get them in foul trouble. Washington under pressure still somehow has the ball but running out of time Washington trying to find some room to get the shot away and in the end just the lights went out for Connor Washington and the word that we used last week was suffocating that's what the London Lions defense will do to you there in the half court that's why offensively you got to try to get points from your defense and get off in transition. Well, we talk about the seven footers. They're actually very big in every position and long as well. So the old oh, Connor Washington steals the ball away and he gets the easiest score of the night. That's the mental toughness of Connor Washington. Excellent defensive pressure from London Lions to play before. But Connor Washington says, Look, I've got a little bit of that in my locker too. A little bit of fortune with a slip. 
So that will be the ease of the buckets that Connor Washington gets this evening. He has a knack of doing that, Connor. It's almost like he pulls the chair out. You think he's going to come at you, and he moves. And, and it happened in the uh, BCL game the other week as well, where the guard just falls over and he runs back a layup. But Coach Schmidt calling a timeout uh, here for the uh, London Lions with their lead down to nine, 30 points to 21. Before the game, Drew managed to uh, talk to Wojciech Urban. Let's see what he had to say. Costa, you bring NBA and high-level experience to the British Basketball League. How's life in London this far? It's been a great experience. Um, you know, foremost, I'm here for, for the basketball. Um, we got a wonderful team, wonderful coaching staff, and uh, you know, the BBL is definitely improving. Uh, there's a lot of great teams in the BBL, and we can't take any opponent lightly. Early days, but what did you take away from last week's performance? Look, like uh, you know, Sheffield, you know, played very hard against us. Um, they're they're a great team as well, um, but we have to understand, you know. We're still trying to figure each other out. It's still early in the season, and we got a lot of work to do, but we're, we're working every single day to strive to become a better team. Urban's grown a bit, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it was Costas Coopers in the interview there with Drew. Well, Dan, they're all 6'10 plus, so it's easy to get them mixed up. Raul, it's a human. I love it when he makes a mistake. Oh, too. I'm going to hold him accountable for that all week. <laughs> I'm not gonna oh, Soko with the two-handed hammer! Wow. That's He's wrong. got a technical for uh, knocking the ball away. He got the he got one earlier in the game. You see, he dunks it here, swings on the ring, and then knocks the ball away. So gets a delay of game technical. It was him earlier on an inbound where he just stopped the Leicester player from it inbounding it I mean he could have also got a technical for swinging on the ring because that in the rules you're technically not allowed to hang on for that long you never see it called but it is in the rules and Leicester Warriors got very fortunate there too that is the worst defensive set I've ever seen the yeah. Leicester I've seen the Leicester Warriors have in a very long time it was a simple cut line drive down the, the basket there was no body there was no interception of his drive and Obi Soko caught the basketball thing and how am I so open and Part of the play was why he probably dunked the ball so ferociously. He had time to. Well, the technical doesn't cost them any points, at least. Washington just crosses the line in time. So Nelson Henry just bobbled the ball. Leicester will keep possession. a little bit about that as well Nelson Henry you can see he's already thinking what he's going to do before he catches the ball that split second of, of loss of focus on the job at hand are you catching the basketball gets him to fumble the ball there Wheeler turns the corner all the way to the ring blocked by Kufos Nelson there's a foul called off the ball I think it might be Soko it is zero that shows at the table Great play there from Costa Kufos, rim protecting, great block shot, and as soon as that block shot is made, they, they regain possession and they're out of the races and didn't quite see what Ovi Sokol did there, but that's his third foul. He was trying to establish position against Nelson Henry, and as you say, that's where the technical did hurt. Didn't cost him any points, but it put him on two fouls, and now that one has sent him to the bench. Washington, a very long two is short. Nelson with the rebound. Behind the back to Decker. Decker down the lane with the flush. Wow, Sam Decker. As the seas opens up, two-hand flush. And, and on your previous point, somehow Washington gets it away. London scrambling for it. Oh, he's into the seas. Kufos running the break. Throws it up to Nelson. Oh, what a finish from Luke Nelson. Incredible. It wasn't the fast as the fast breaks with the big seven foot center leading it. But boy, was that pass on the money. A beautiful reverse layup from Luke Nelson. Well, he still had work to do, Nelson, from that catch. <laughs> Isn't it supposed to be in reverse order? You don't usually see the seven footer pushing it, throwing the lob up to the 6 3 in Luke Nelson. But a wonderful play there by the London Lions. How did that start? Here on the defensive end, sacrificing their bodies, getting on the floor, which sparked the transition play there.
such a positive attitude they have on the defensive end. They're like a hot and impacts there. It's, they're in numbers, it's an energy, and you can just see the Leicester Warriors look a little bit flustered at times because the pressure is so intense. Well, that's the, uh, that's the thing. They've got so many waves to throw at you. We talked about it a little bit uh, last week. Because of the depth and because you don't drop any when you go down the, uh, down the list, they can throw guys out for two, three minutes at a time. But the difference is you still have to go out there and do it. In the last two previous London Lions team, we felt that they just didn't handle the league domestically professionally. And everything that we've seen from this group, they're mature, they've been around the block, they're professionals, and it's business as usual if they're playing in England, if they're playing in Europe, it doesn't matter to this group. They're focused on the ultimate goal. Patrick Whelan bringing the ball forward for Leicester against Urban, two guys who both played at Eurobasket. Urban had a great Eurobasket, 15 points a game. With the Czech Republic made it to the last 16, beaten by Ante de Compo in Greece. As the foul is called. And he picked up a foul there, but I'm just watching him from 75 feet. He's just hounding Levin, being aggressive, moving his feet. Great effort. Well, 16 minutes into the game, and we've not seen Derek Thornton. That would suggest that Rob Paternostro isn't really going to use him today. No great surprise. He's had one practice with the team. This is not the place to throw him out and try and use him in. No, it's an expression throw, throw him in the deep end. I think the uh, <laughs> this is a bottomless ocean because right now at Albia, a baptism of fire. What you don't want to do, I don't think, in my opinion, is why. He's a guy that's looking for leadership. You'd want to embed him in properly. You don't want to rush it. You don't want him to then second guess his own confidence in his own role on this team. So I think it's a wise move from, from, from Rob Potter and Astro. Um, but at the moment, you know, they've got a game on their hands here and, and trying to somehow tame these London Lions. Well, they've got his second foul. That's why he's sat down. There's Nelson. Kicks out to the corner and Queenie for three. Rebound Washington. Loving step back long two is good. And that's what the Leicester Riders need if they're going to go places this season. Not only in this game, but they need Mark Loving to step up, take a bigger role offensively to take the load off. Offensive foul called on. Uh, Kufos for an illegal screen. That's his second foul. The one thing you would say about lines, all the depth they've got, they have got a bit of foul trouble here. Kufos has two, Sharma has two, Soko has three, Urban has two. And that's a byproduct of the of the game plan, isn't it? The, the aggressive high pressure defense and you know, they're in team fouls now. They've got to try and get through the rest of this quarter without giving the best of riders free trips to the free throw line. Here's Walker. Oh, it kicked off the rim by Decker. Great handsy play there by Sam Decker, which is legal. If it's rolling on the rim, you're allowed to knock it off there. Kufos and Decker working together. Loving pulls in the rebound. It's a great rebound from Mark Levin as well. Just slags that from the air. Jackson all the way to the basket. That's one of his key strengths, Zach Jackson. He has that ability to penetrate in the heart of one's defense, and he's got that ability to maneuver mid-air and adjust his shot. Great play from Zach Jackson. London Lions calling a timeout. Yeah, Jackson has this real, it's almost like he takes off and then he decides where he's going to go, and he has the ability to finish in so many different ways. It's, it's, and, he, and he has the ability to slow down as well. Yeah which is slightly uncanny. It's a skill of in itself, and he's got seven points personal, leading the score along with Patrick Whelan, also on seven, but when you look at the London Lions at the moment, I'm sure Coach Smith is relaying this message, keep going, the, the, the game plan so far is good, up by 10, but it's been that aggressive nature on the defensive end, which has spurred this London team on the team off. Well, I'd say the one thing uh, from a Leicester perspective is, They've not shot the ball as well as the Lions. They've turned the ball over eight times, which has been turned into 13 points. And, and somehow they're still only down 10 here, just about hanging on. 
that's what you've got to do when the, the, the whole world seems against you and things are tough. You've got to find a way to just hang in there and, and stay stay in the ball game because you never know what's going to happen come the second half and the last stage of this game, especially knowing that some of these London Lions players are in foul trouble. We're well, bringing it forward. Nice pass back to Zubchic from Nelson. Whelan boxing out, but no oh, call for a foul. Wow, that's a, an interesting one. Maybe could he jump, but you, you know, you were within your rights to box out and push back. That's, that's what you, you're taught as a basketball player box out first. And it's in the back of the shot. Oh, I don't know about that. No, I, I don't think it's a foul. Oh, I, I do know. I don't think it's a foul, but. Ward Hibbert steps back, tough shot and there's another foul there Decker ended up on the floor, I didn't quite see who sent him there but number 13, Connor Washington's number is shown to the table that would look a little bit more obvious to me just because you saw a big body flying across the court there but that's what the Temple's been like, you know, Leicester Warriors having to work so hard just to, just to secure a defensive rebound here. The London Lions are ferociously attacking the glass and did a really good job on the, the rebounds. Well, they've only got four offensive rebounds. It feels like they have more than that. It does, it does. Nelson for three. Oh, what a shot from Luke Nelson! Beautiful shot, that was highly contested. I thought that was good on board defense from Mark London, but Luke Nelson gets it off, gets it to go. Another one who had a good uh, Eurobasket campaign in a difficult five games for Great Britain. Walker. Again, patient with it. And again, he's fouled Zubcic. Call for it. That'll be his second foul. Uh, this is great patience from Mo Walker. He knows that the double team is coming as well, so he's aware of that. Josh Wood Hibbert, number two here on your screen. He's coming over to help. He spins the other way away from the help defense. And gets the referee to blow the whistle. Foul number two for Dupsic. Well, uh, judged not to be completely vertical. He's shaking his head in frustration out of that. And no Walker can't make the first of the two free throws. One for three currently from the free for low Mo, Mo Walker. He makes the second and he will presumably get the last 106 seconds off as Adekoya comes in for him. Well, it's... Uh, the smaller lineup that Leicester can go with, with no Walker or Nelson Henry. He's got a queer, is the underside five. He's capable of doing that, but this one the team is big. Here's Nelson. Gets in the air, throws it sort of hopefully. And Loving is a little unfortunate there because he went after the ball, but Queen got there first, and Loving just clapped it into him for a foul. Yeah, it's that one of those ones, Mark Loving saw there could be a potential steal there, so he goes for it. It's just a tad off, and the momentum just takes him into that, to the player, which is an obvious and easy foul for the referee to cause, but what you don't want, you're in team foul, so of course this will send Kareem Queenie to the free throw line. Well, I said Mo Walker would probably get the... Uh, Last 106 seconds off, he got 15 of them. And then that foul has sent him back to the bench with Mo Walker coming in for him. Yes. Really converts from the free throw line. London stretched their lead to 13. Washington just couldn't quite keep that in play. Good work from Queeley. Excellent work from Queeley. You see him low stance there, high pressure. He's got a really low wingspan. You can see him swiping at the ball there, and Connor Washington ran out of court. It goes out of bounds. Well, they're almost doing offense defense here. Adekoya comes back. Uh. 
Nelson, nice pass. Queenie on his own! Jumped it in! Again, a miscommunication, loss of matchup on defense, and the London Lions are getting benefit. Jackson stumbling through, gets the shot away, but he's short. Zubchic off the ball. Again, he looks at the referee. Wheeler driving in, just gets that in. It's a tough move from Patrick Wheeler, and again, mental toughness from him. He's been one of those guys that's looking to attack all night long and almost gets the steal. It's Quigley, back to Decker. Decker looking for room along the baseline, almost running out of it. Here's Nelson, tough shot on the fall away. Jackson has the rebound, shot clock is off. Leicester can take the last shot of the first half here. Whelan pressured by Ward Hibbert. Whelan gets past him, gets all the way. Nelson with a block, but there was a foul first, I think, on Josh Ward Hibbert. The worst time to foul to if you're the London Lions. One second away from getting out of here with a 13 point lead at half time. Patrick Whelan does a great job of creating for himself. And the health defense was there, I think. Nelson was going to come over there and contest that shot, but Patrick Whelan, excellent job. Whelan up to eight personal points. And he makes them both 47 36. One second for the Lions to heave from inside their own half from Zubchich, and that will do it. It's uh, the half here at the Copper Box, and the London Lions have a double figure lead 47 points to 36. They lead, and uh, well, they've been good value for it, but Leicester not letting them get away yet. No, they haven't, Dan. And as I said, these are the types of games you just gotta hang in there. You know, the game can change on its head in, 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 in a moment. All it takes is one event to happen. And the Leicester Warriors have done a really good job, I think, of maintaining composure. This could have been one of those games that gets out of your hand, down 20, and then you're forever chasing. But you, it's within reach. It's a 11-point game. And we're talking about London as well having a little bit of foul trouble. I'm sure Coach Paternostro and his assistants will be thinking about that. You've just got to stay in the game and see what happens in the fourth quarter. And that's something that they have done so far. Let's get some reaction from that first half. Luke Nelson is with Drew. Great start for the Lions in that first half. But Luke, you played most of your career overseas. How important was it for you to return home? Uh, I mean, it, it seemed like a logical step in my career. It was a great opportunity. Uh, you know, they're trying to make some big changes here at, at the Lions. And I wanted to be a part of it. And so far, so good. And offensively is where you guys were clicking, but it was the defensive end that impressed us. What standard are you guys trying to set on that side of the ball? I mean, we've got to be a team that, that teams don't want to play against because obviously, like, we've got, as everyone's been saying, we've got the target on our back um, and we've got to make it tough for the team for 40 minutes, not just the first half like we've done so far. We've got to make sure we carry that into the second half. And finally, just to provide some insight for the culture of this group, as it seemed like everyone is bought in. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think for any team to have any success, you've got to have like the whole team got to be on the same page. And so far, the coaching staff have done a great job. The guys are buying in and sacrificing for each other. So hopefully it continues for the whole season. Thanks for your time, Luke. Thank you. He's had a big first half on his return back home. And the Lions have collectively as well. It's an 11-point lead. An explosive performance from London, laying down a marker. Reaction and analysis coming next.
Welcome back to the Copper Box, where the Lions go into the locker room at halftime with an 11-point lead. It was an intense start for them, a 28-point first quarter against the number one defense in the BBL last season. Left it hit back, but the, the Lions really turning on the style. Luke Nelson getting in on the act, and a solid all-round performance in this all-star Lions team. And London dominating Kieran Achara in pretty much every statistical category. They've been very, very calculated, you know, they've been relentless defensively, really, really caused a lot of problems for Leicester and punishing them from, uh, with that because of that. Now we've talked already at, at, at length about London's depth, but it's in particular the versatility that this depth that allows, enables, and the mismatches that it can create. Very much so, and I, I love the way they were playing because when you had different matchups on the on the court, you could bring someone in. So there, they're exploiting the pick and roll game, getting open for an easy dunk. Here, you got Decker going to work, you know, creating his own spacing, creating his own shot. Again, seeing people as mismatches. The ball movement's great. Get the ball into Kufus, got great soft touch, really attacking the Leicester's bigs. And this one for me. Just the way they get out and run, you know, they, they, they get out and run, that Zubchik can run the floor. When Mo Walker's in the game, he's, he's a little bit slower, he gets out there, out in the break, stretch the floor as well. And that's key, turning defence into offence, is something you were pointing out to me time and time again as we were watching the first half. And for me, that, that is London Lions MO, they have really focused on that defensive end, and when, when they play defence at a very, very high level, they get turnovers, they get out and run, they force up bad shots and create space to get out in the floor and get easy scores. Last bucket we saw there, the dunk from Obi Soko, got a technical for that, which seemed a little bit harsh. You know what, this, this game we're here to be entertained, right. you know, l l give him a second, give him a little warning, we move on to the next play. You know, for me, <laughs> I've got to say this, the referees are there to be in the background, you know, let, let, the, let the players be the entertainers. I can attest to viewers that he shall have let them play at least five times <laughs> in the first half, uh, and loudly so. Now, Mo Walker was front and centre for the Leicester Riders, wasn't he? A lot of their offence was coming through Mo. The game plan really was for him to cause trouble and he was delivering. For me, that's where they had success, you know, I, I was saying that the London Lions would make it very, very hard. But Mo Walker's got a lot of size, and when he's in the game, he can go out, he's getting them into foul trouble as well, getting them to the free throw line. And then from, from that, the defence is going to have to collapse more. Leicester have got the perimeter shooters, don't they, if London allow them space to do damage? Well, London do a great job of uh, shrinking the floor. They don't want an easy scores, all right? They don't want an easy layup score. So when, when Leicester riders drive to the basket, if, if they replace, get the space out in the corners, they will be open and get some open looks. So Patrick Whelan getting in uh, on the act there. He had a big season last year, as we talked about at the top. He's their leading scorer going into half time with 11. How important is it that he kicks on if Leicester are going to get back into this? He is, he is one of those key pieces. Like I said, last year, Leicester could score offensively and defensively, you know, they did the job. They need those players to step up. With Patrick Whelan, especially again, no Gino Crandall, he's going to have to take it to another level. We've got to remember as well that Rob Paternostro, one of the great defensive minds in the game, Leicester Riders teams are defined typically by their defence. He's going to take a look at a lot of these players he's had to meet up against before and start to come up with a game plan, you think, at half time. Yeah, well, definitely. And that, actually, I think he'll go back to his uh, offensive game. 26 points of, from, from London Lions were scored either from fast break points or points from turnovers. If you, if you stop those points from happening, stop turning the ball over, Leicester are back in the game. Now, I was reflecting on something at the top of the show, you'll remember that I mentioned pretty much as soon as we came on air, I mentioned uh, a Drew Lasker winning the playoffs. And that upset you. It was, a, it, was a, it was a low blow from him, I'd like to say, not me, but to make it up to your big man. I decided I have to do that. So we put together the very first plays of the week of the season. That's wrong. Thank you. Giants have a four on one. Is there Williams? Looks the slam that and says somebody jump. Here's 
Miller. Green comes from Delpatch. Locked up to oh! Delpatch with the alley oop. The only person in the gym that was getting that was Marco Delpesh. Green spins in the oh lane and goodness. William Lee jams it in with a put back slam. Now, just before we got to that, you probably heard that massive <laughs> cheer from the cobble box for a dunk in the background. I thought they could have at least waited for you to drop your disgusting, but <laughs> maybe they will. Maybe we'll give them time. Now, first one of the season, big man, which way are you going? I'm surprised you don't have Drew Lasker lifting the trophy up as a player of the week. <laughs> but uh, no, Dirk Williams, you know, it's great to see him playing basketball, different club, but doing the same thing. That play was disgusting. There we go. Love that. <laughs> Fine work. We're seeing Dirk Williams in Manchester next week, of course. More of that a little bit later on but we're all about London Leicester right now this one keenly poised the champs in a scrap and London as we expected turning on the style second half is coming next There is an electric atmosphere this evening at the Copper Box and the Lions fans are loving what they're seeing at the moment. An 11-point ball game, an advantage Lions, but this is the Leicester Riders we're talking about. They are unlikely to go down without a fight. It should be a compelling second half and it's about to tip off. So I'll throw back to Drew and and Dan. Thank you very much, Nat. Yes, indeed, it, it should be. I mean, we were looking at the numbers at the half and Leicester haven't shot the ball very well, have turned the ball over a little more than Rob Paternoster would like, but they're only down 11. It's, it's still within reach for his team. I have to correct you on that 
They've turned the ball over a lot more than Rob Patnasher would like. Nine turnovers at the moment. This is a team that would average around 11, 12 at the most last year. So, uh, you know, quite high and above their, their averages there. But as you say, Dan, the things are not going you know, their way. You know, they're losing the battle of the boards also. A number of things. They're, they're, they're 11 points down, but they're still within reach here. They're still putting themselves in an opportunity to challenge at the end of this basketball game. London Lions, on the other hand, they'll look to do much of the same. I think the half court, um, I think, sent them a for them was look I really like the intensity on defense it's given us good look on offense well 10 minutes on the clock we can get underway here with the second half possession arrow with the Lions so they will start us here in the third Cooper's out to Nelson for three misses everything great work on the rebound from Urban to keep that alliance possession. You got to love a player that's talented but does the little things and hustle. And yes. Urban, all night long, I've saw a lot of things that he's done well. A lot of hustle plays. We call them winning plays. Nelson needs to get it in. There's only six on the shot clock because the original shot didn't hit the ring. Nelson, that one does hit the ring but doesn't drop. It's a really big quarter here for the Leicester Warriors. If you remember last week, this is the third quarter that the London Lions were really able to suffocate the Sheffield Sharks. Sheffield Sharks have only scored six points, I think, seven minutes into that third quarter. Loving penetrates, trying to get it out to Whelan. Out in front is Decker, and he will drop it in for two. He's had a fair few of those open court dunks, hasn't he, Sam Decker? Really good at running the, bat, uh, running the floor, but oh, it comes as a result. It's turnover number 10 now for the Leicester Riders. Whelan for three, off the mark. That was a great look there by Whelan as Nelson Henry set the flare screen to free him up. Decker to the step away, a little short. Loving, knocks it down. It's a really good screen there. Nelson Henry really set a big one on Sam Decker there, which created the space and the shooting opportunity for his teammate Mark Loving. Decker back to Soko, takes the three. A little flat that one. Loving it leaked out in front. He's fouled from behind by Soko. And might just have a word there as to whether that should be an unsportsmanlike because he's the last man down the court he's coming in from behind if it is an unsportsmanlike Soko's out of the game because he got a technical in the first half wow oh wow big big call and by, by the rules of interpretation that is an unsportsmanlike isn't it but he, even if he's playing the ball he's coming from behind it is an unsportsmanlike wow. foul he's the last man coming from behind it's an unsportsmanlike foul, and Obi Soko, the London Lions captain, is done for the day. That's a great pass as well from Patrick Whelan. It's one of those passes too, you think, should I, shouldn't I? And it's a great pass, and Mark Lovin is equal to it. Well, he's, he's going to have a word with the referee. They're not going to change it. They had the discussion, and I have to say, because I know he's going for the ball, but because he's the last man coming from behind, by rule, it's an unsportsmanlike foul. It's not really the sort of play that the rule was written for, but that is how it is worded. And Ovi Soko, despite his protestations, has to go. And he has to leave the bench area as well. He has to go back to the locker rooms. It's the same thing in football, right? You can get a, a yellow card by accident, just a wrong place, right time. But what that does is the next time that happens, that's your second yellow card and it's a red and it's off. So, you know, players don't always intentionally mean to foul or sometimes it's just unfortunate luck, you know, bad luck even. That that case, I think, was a was an unfortunate scenario where he's just trying to make a play on the game, but interpretation of the rules, he's the last man who fouled. And you think about the first one was just two delay of game yeah. warning, you know, one warning for the first one and then the second one. He doesn't realize he's got to leave. He has to go. Once you're disqualified, you have to go back to the locker room. Yeah, I was just going to say, you can't sit on the bench when you've been ejected. So an incredible turn of events here. But fortunately for the London Lions, they got about six or seven more over there ready to fill in. So <laughs> yeah. I don't feel sorry yeah, for them yeah. at all. 
<laughs> they, they should have enough to cope with the absence of Stoke, I think that it has but yeah, when you add up the three things that he did for the ejection, it, it is on the harsh side, but all correct by rule. Here's Loving driving in. What a finish from Mark Loving. That is incredible. He didn't release the basketball until his way down. Because if he lets it go all the way up, then the seven foot Kufels blocks it. Beautiful play. And he has this type of talent. We need to see more of this. Him on the ball created not only for himself, but his teammates. Oh, my. Lucic on one foot, what a shot. It looks like he's playing in the playground. That looks effortless. Nelson Henry. Well, it somehow ended up to Washington. I don't think he was the intended target. Lucic for three. Pulls right to Kufos, and they reset the shot clock. And London would have been happy for that not to have happened because they'd have ended up with three. But it didn't hit the ring, and it went back to 24. So it shouldn't have gone back to 24. Uh, either way. But guys, just look at this lineup on the floor. Seven feet, six nine, six nine, six eight. Luke Nelson, six three. I mean, that is incredible. The length of these guys. Well, it's something we said last year about this Leicester team. And they look relatively uh, normal size compared to London, don't they? As Nelson finds his way to the hole. Good move there. Squeezes his way through the gap and gets it to go. Washington has the mismatch with Kufos, but he can't really shoot over him. Jackson gets to the elbow. Oh, that's a tough one with Zubchitz closing him out. He knows where he wants to get. He knows the spots he can get to. And he, that pull-up dribble is really effective. Give and go from Nelson. Kicks out to Hoban in the corner for three. What a play by Luke Nelson getting into the teeth of the defense and hitting that three ball corner pocket as Urban knocks it down. Urban's just picked up his third foul there. That's a great kick. It is. He makes the three, but he will want that foul back, I think. Because Luke Nelson gives up a good shot for a great shot. Luke Nelson could have, you know, went for the layoff himself there, but saw Ruben in the corner for three, and his teammate knocks it down. Stolen away. Zubcic. Back to Urban, back to Zubcic, and it's tipped away by Loving. I don't think that was a goal ten because I think it hit the ring before Loving got a hand on it. There's a foul on the rebound either way, so I think they will get some shots. Let's have a look. Yeah, ooh, actually, I'm not sure from that angle. It might have been a goal ten. Either way, it's two free throws. Oh, no, it does hit the ring, so that's a legal play by Loving, and that's not by Jackson. Great. No call for the referee there. It took us two or three times to, to process that one through on the replays. And you got to love the effort there from Mark Loving getting back into that play, sending him to the free throw line where it was a for sure layup or dunking. Send him there where he can go earn it. Irvine with the offensive rebound. Zubchich for three. There's another offensive rebound for the Lions. Finally, let's get their hands on it. Wow, great energy from the Lions again on the board. Washington strings the three. Big shot from Connor Washington. Fearless is that number 13, and that's a big play. Zubchich, big swipe down at the ball on Jackson. And he's called for the foul. And if you're a Leicester Ryder fan, you just want to stay within striking distance when you get here in the fourth quarter. And I think the way they get back in this game is getting some more attempts from three-point line. A place where they led the league in last year, shooting over 40%. And haven't had very many attempts here tonight, so... 
Well, just three for ten. Thirty percent. But you're right. I mean, that's a that's a way to get yourself back in a ball game. And oh, I think yeah. Connor Washington's a uh, Patrick Whelan. Those are the guys that can. They don't need a lot of space or time to get up threes. Josh Sharma back into the game. Got a couple of fouls in the first half. Only played two minutes. And Zicic converts from the free throw line. Washington stumbling, keeping his dribble though. Driving in, drops it back to Loving. Great pass from Washington. <laughs> that was Connor Washington all play created off the screen. Great penetration and Mark Loving always moving, never staying still. Nice finish. Zucic wants it down low because he's got the size advantage here. Shovels it back to Decker, looking for room underneath. How'd he get that away? That's a tough finish by the 6'9", Sam Decker, as he wills and deals under the rim and finishes with his length. Nice play. Jackson gets it back. Jackson for three. Jackson strings it. Nice patience there. Didn't have a lot on, but Nelson Henry was he recognized he was a little bit too far out to make a move himself, and Zach Jackson jab step, knocked down three. Nelson round the screen. Zubchich out for a long two. Rims out. Oh! Shoma with the follow and the jab. Wow, he's reintroduced back into this game and straight away left everyone in the arena know he's here. Beautiful pop back dunk. Well, Lester going quick and Nelson commits the foul. He's not convinced it was a foul. Jackson threw it up, so he will go to the line for two. Let's have a look. Here comes Jackson. Oh, it's a clash of knees as much as anything else. But how about that play by Josh Sharma? I didn't even know where he came from, but <laughs> we know he has that athleticism. We watched him in warm-ups going between the legs, and he just not even in shot here and just comes out of nowhere and just swings around the rim. And in such a dominant area for the London Lions. Ten offensive rebounds. Nine second chance points from those ten rebounds. Drops him down. You can see London winning the battle of the boards. 27 to uh, 17, they're dead even on defensive rebounds. It's all about the offensive rebounds. It's the difference between those two teams. His deck up for three, off the mark, and nobody will rebound that. That'll go on the stats as a team rebound for Leicester. A little bit of relief too for the Riders camp to see that one sail out of bounds. It means they don't have to battle that length for the London Lions to retrieve the, the ball for a defensive rebound. Van Oostrom back into the game. Well, Ant, you touched on this at the beginning of the quarter about how London wore down the Sheffield Sharks. And now my question is, when does Connor Washington begin to wear down as he's been met at 75 feet this entire game? He fires up the three and doesn't hit. That's a really good point. And it's something we haven't really talked too much about. I mean, Derek Thornton is brought in to be the, the, the import player, right? The import player is usually the leader, plays heavy minutes. He is not a factor today. So, you know, Leicester Wright is a man down, a significant man down in the grand scheme of things. Loving going to the rim, can't convert. McKenzie looks like he's going to come in now, maybe for Washington. There's another offensive rebound, or is it? Yes, it is. Good hustle again. We've seen them do that a few times. Decker with another dunk for the Lions. Wow, is that dunk number five for Sam Decker? That pump fake creates in so much space because everyone's so fearful of him from out there and sails him to the rim. In this game, you're described in three ways. A basketball player, a baller, or a hooper. Sam Decker <laughs> is a hooper. <laughs> well, he's going to get himself a break. He's already got 12 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 assists. And you can see why most of us picked him.
as a potential MVP last week. <laughs> <laughs> he just does it in so many different areas too. That stat line you just read reeled off. 23 efficiency. Nothing but a positive impact for this London Lions. In only 20 minutes as well. Yeah. Loving. Walker from 17 feet hits the jump shot. Now Walker's got that in his game. If he's got time to size up that jump shot, we've seen him look really confident out there from 15 feet. Deflected by Walker and Quigley probably should have let that one go out of bounds. Instead, it came off his hand for a Leicester possession. It's a good stop there from the Leicester Warriors. Good pressure. Hands on the passing lane and a fortunate or unfortunate touch from Queenie goes out of bounds. Well, this has already been Leicester's best offensive quarter of the game with 19 points. They got 18 in the first two. Here's Wheeler for three. He's had a couple of them just rim out like that. He has, and just a ordinary of a player that's trying to come back and find his blow. Great hands from Adekoya. And out in front is McKenzie. The pass wasn't great. He was able to keep it alive. Whelan drops it off to Walker with the jam. And Coach Schmidt is not happy. He calls a timeout. The lead is down to eight. Wow, great play from Adekoya. I don't quite understand how they didn't get anything out of this here. And Kimmel McKenzie does a good job not to turn over, but I don't understand why he doesn't just turn around there and score the ball. But Patrick Whelan off the dribble, mismatch from Sharma, takes him first step, creates space. Mo Walker finishes with a dunk. Well, 21 18, Leicester lead this period, and it's trimmed the London advantage to 65 57. And we've been going on about the London Lions all night here, but don't get it twisted. The Leicester Riders. I got a lot of respect for this club because any other team would have folded. You look up, it's only an eight-point game. They're only three possessions away from taking the lead. So they just keep plugging away, keep standing there, and let's see what happens as this game begins to wind down. And they've played the whole season to date without their import player, i.e. the MVP of the whole league last year, Gino Crando. So they, they haven't had the replacement come in. You know, they're hoping that, that Derek Thornton, their latest signing, can come in and fill that void. But, you know, it's a significant piece of the puzzle that's missing. And the Leicester Riders are, are competing with, with the London Lions here, which have a, wow, a, a very, very talented roster. Crando, of course, was a replacement player for Leicester. They originally signed Jonah Matthews who went back to the States, thought he might get drafted, ended up not happening for him. Matthews, by the way, now playing on Asvel in a EuroLeague team in France, alongside Parker Jackson Cartwright, formerly of Cheshire. So a BBL backcourt in the EuroLeague a few years later, although Matthews never actually played for Leicester. It's still great to hear. Close. I mean, I love to hear that, Dan. Two guys from our league that's going on. and well, Parker doing Jackson good Cartwright good. was a tremendous story, really. He went from Cheshire, he was in the COVID season, was in the running for MVP, but obviously there wasn't one by the end of the, because uh, the season finished early. Goes over to Germany, works himself up to MVP of the BBL in Germany and now playing in France. As I said, your league level, a tremendous rise for him. And he, he should be thanked. Ramon Fletcher every day because his introduction to professional basketball was six points for him, 33 and 12 <laughs> for Ramon wow. Fletcher. Well, he certainly used it to inspire him on to good things, that's for sure. Zucic uh, makes the first of three free throws. But can't make the third. Hooking foul forward against uh, McKenzie. Fantastic defense there by Ben Sherman. I don't care how great of a ball handler you are, you don't want to see someone in your grill every time you dribble the ball up. So for McKenzie there, that's just a little bit of frustration because he's sick of smelling the London Lions' breath every time he brings the ball up. McKenzie trying to 
harassed Van Ustel right back. He might have got away with a step there at the end of that Van Ustel. And then off Vinci Farpoort off the ball, I think, on Salawadi. Right, one of those games from, for whatever reason, a lot of whistles, a lot of violations happening, fouls, travels. Just clobbered him there with the screen, went with the shoulder. I'm about to say you do that once or twice in your career. <laughs> You, you've been on the end like like loving was there, <laughs> feeling the jaw afterwards. What the hell? I do miss setting a good screen. It's a very satisfying feeling. Ooh, zip on that pass and feeling just can't drop it in. It's another good look for the Leicester Warriors. Goes missing. Van Oostrom, the no look. Great ball movement, Zubchic gets the crowd on their feet at the copper box. You can feel the energy of every pass, and Zubchic finishes the play, one, two, three, knocks down. Beautiful play. And a touch of OLA basketball there, Jackson getting all the way to the rim, and I think Sharma has just pushed Walker over to get that rebound. And it is 20 that's shown to the table, and that will be his third personal foul. I love that aggressive drive there from Zach Jackson, and we talked about where the Leicester Riders are going to get their points from this season, and he's one of those guys that can get it done, has one of the best mid-range games in our league, and we remember back to the Bristol Flyers game where Leicester Riders were struggling. He provided 27 points to get them over the hump, so this is one guy who does have it in him. Scored something like 12, 14 points in a row in the fourth quarter in that game, if I recall rightly. Walker at the uh, free throw line. He's uh, been 50% on his previous two trips. Makes the front end here. And he gets them both to go. And... Uh, Patrick Whelan's going to get a quick breather as Blake Bowman's going to come in for the last 35.6 seconds here of the third quarter. That's an offensive foul on Sharma, and that's going to be his fourth. I don't understand why... He's not set there. I don't know if it's a guard went too quickly, but this isn't the first time he's been called from an illegal screen. You notice how the big went straight to it's probably the guard's fault. There. <laughs> yeah. That's what they do. I said I don't know if the guard went too well, early. Spoke it out there. <laughs> <You're> passing the <laughs> buck, mate. Get your feet set, big fella, and wait for me to do this work. <laughs> Bowman back to McKenzie. McKenzie gets into the key off the mark with a four away. Like Ten seconds left in the third here. Wheely, Zubchich, cross court to Van Oostrom. This is the three. Well, there are 11 points between them at the half. There are still 11 points between the two sides here at the end of the third quarter. Leicester with their best offensive output, 23 points in that quarter, but they were unable to eat into London's advantage with 10 to play at the Copper Box. It's the Lions 70, the Riders 59. We'll have the fourth quarter after this break.
Welcome back to London where the Lions lead the Leicester Riders 70 to 59. Leicester with the opening possession of the fourth quarter. Check foul on Van Oostrom. It's good pressure there from the London Lions, but these are the fouls that London Lions aren't going to want to pick up. Good defense there for 20 seconds almost, but Mr. Wilders here will get an opportunity to reset the offense. Ball didn't really move too much, stayed between the two guards there. Kenzie gets room for three. Back iron comes all the way out to Walker. Jackson, and a miscommunication with Bowman, throws it out of court. Again, okay, it's another turnover. Turnover number 13 now for the Leicester Riders. The right idea just didn't execute the pass. <laughs> Offensive foul court on Kupos. His third. Top call. I mean, as a big, I'm like, okay, I didn't see a whole lot in that one. I didn't see anything in there either. That's what you're taught. Stay wide, stay big. Well, at least you didn't blame the guard that time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a coir at the elbow, back eye? Team able to get off the mark here in the fourth quarter so far. It looks a little bit rigid in the both offenses. Well, Kupa slipped and gets called for the travel as a result. Help back to his feet by the riders' team. Just a little hobbly there. Is he okay, Aiden? And Rob sees that this is the time here as he brings in three of his starters back in the game if they're going to strike. They're gonna have to do it now. Well, they're down 11 as they were at halftime. They've got nine minutes to try and do something about it. Here's Washington. Needs some help here. Finds it from Whelan. Nobody goes out to Patrick Whelan, and that is a big mistake. Well, it was high pressure there. The help was very aggressive, but what they did is they didn't locate Patrick Whelan. The most deadliest shooter there is on court for the Leicester Riders. Quealy. Knocked away by Walker. Lions will keep the ball with eight on the shot clock. Nelson returns. Pick and roll, Kupos leaves it short, gets his own rebound. Second attempt is good. It's so tough, you can really see the size and experience of the advantage that Costa Kupos has. Stays with the play, and it's a relatively easy putback for him. Lovin, tough one, knocks it down. Tough shot by Mark Lovin. Again, showing he can get it off the dribble with a little step back there. 14 points personal for Mark Lovin. Decker, foul by Walker, will shoot two. Again, it's Sam Decker creating something out of nothing, isn't it? Finding a way to attack the bigs, and Mo Walker doesn't really have any other option but to foul there. Well, Dan, when's the last time you've seen, I mean, you've been around this league a long time, Sam Decker's at 6'9", can bring the ball up the floor, run the pick and roll, can shoot and get it to the basket. Wow, that's on the spot right there, Drew. There's not too many players of his ability have ever played in the league. The guys who've come over, who've had previous NBA experience, tended to be the bigger players rather than uh, somebody who can handle the ball as well as he can. 
is that is that did I bluff my way enough through that? You did a fantastic <laughs> job at that. Great smoke screen. Yeah. He's been doing that for the last twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> We've been fooled. <laughs> Here's Washington. Jackson trying to go baseline. He's fouled by Decker, and that's only his first. Well, the London Lions, as good, as intense as they are in defense, it's got to be a, a controlled aggression. At the moment, it's just aggression. You know, as you notice, a lot of those players are racking up a lot of fouls. It's also the team third in this quarter. So what they don't want to do is get too early to that penalty situation with good hands from Nelson. Seven on the shot clock for Leicester. And that's what they're excellent at. They're long, they're active in the passing lanes. They are excellent. And that's a good point, Dan. You don't want to get the Leicester Riders finishing off this game shooting free throws. Well, they already shot 16 of 21 thus far. Whelan trying to force it a little bit there to walk up and turns it over. Oh, thought Loving was going to get there. Decker goes past him. Decker all the way. Three white shirts collapsed on him. One of them fouled him. He'll shoot two. Just that fine margins there. And Decker, slippery as they come. He's so good. Get into that rim. Speaking of margins, if Mark Loving just anticipates that pass a little bit better than He's off on the other end for a dunk, but instead Sam Decker goes to the line for two where he just knocks his first one down. He will get himself a breather now. Sam Decker sitting down, shot the ball very well. 15 efficient points for him. Steve Mets! Moment, 10 rebounds and 5 assists. He is a, a game differentiator. Well, it's hard to stand out with this amount of talent, but it's very clear he's their best player. Nelson not happy to see the whistle against him there. That's his third and team's fourth with still seven minutes to go here in the final quarter. Washington to Walker. Walker with the ball away. Cleaned off the rim by Zucic. Nice pass. Just waited perfectly over Jackson to uh, Zucic. That's the size difference, isn't it? It was like Dupchitz has an open shot because he knows the defender can't get anywhere near it. Jackson is fouled, and he will shoot too. Zach Jackson again finding a way. He's had a really strong game. 13 points for him. Yeah, he's had he's he's played very well tonight, and as you see there on the score score sheet, he along with Levin and Whelan going to need a lot out of them this season. Thirteen for him, thirteen, uh, sorry, fourteen for Loving, fifteen for Whelan, twelve for Walker, they spread it about, Lester. Oostrom slips. Well, that was slightly unfortunate. Here's Wheeler out in the break under pressure. Can't convert. What had happened was Wheeler got bumped over. The referee's going to have to stop him. Wheeler got bumped over, ended up on the floor. There's obviously a wet patch where Wheeler landed, and that was exactly the point that he then went on to and went over. So. Whelan had just picked him up from this very spot, and you can see his foot just goes out from underneath him. I'm not sure they've done a good enough job on that. 
Vucic is calling for the floor wiper to come back. Players been working hard out there in this game. A lot of perspiration. <laughs> no, but this been a, this has been a very enjoyable game to watch here from both sides. Both teams giving it all they got. Look up to Sharma! Oh my! Shot Sharma! What a finish on the alley oop! That is an incredible play. The height that the pass was thrown. Very few people playing professional basketball can reach those heights. And Sharma just takes off. Goodness me. Wow. It's one thing to be seven feet tall, but to have that type of athleticism. As he just climbed the stairs there, goes and gets it. The ball's out of reach. And he does the rest. Wow, I'm sure we're going to be seeing that play a few more times this year. Well, there aren't many people that could catch that ball, <laughs> let alone let alone dunk it off that. And that really fired up his teammates and the crowd here at the Copper Box. They put on the show today, the London Lions. We've seen a lot at the rim, but that the play of the game so far. Well, you can go ahead and chop that up and put that down as the disgusting play of the day. <laughs> Karen Dobb done, mate. I think it'll, I think it'll be in next week's uh, top five as well. <laughs> he might get a couple of disgustings out of that. And he's, and he's elaborated it this year. Come with a little bit more aggression. I love it. He's been working in the offseason on it. <laughs> Well, that dunk has stretched London's lead back to 14. Have Leicester got anything left in the tank? Shot clock at five. Washington for three, off the ball. Ball falls into the hands of Urban, London looking to extend Zubchic in the corner Sharma fighting for the rebound and winning the battle Nelson keeps it in play something they've done all game excellent a crush on the boys today the London Lions Nelson probing, knocked away, gets it back. Shot clock, he's got to fire it up here. Luke Nelson gets it away before the buzzer. And Sharma keeps it alive again, just runs out of room on the baseline. See how hard it is for, for a technical foul, I think, on Luke Nelson. He must have said something to the referee. So Lester will get a free throw. That's his fourth, by the way. Now you can see his argument. I, I'm not convinced that it was entirely for that. There's been a few times where he's asked the question of the referee, and maybe it's an accumulation technical. Yeah, that interaction itself, though, didn't look aggressive, did it? Loving is fouled and will shoot two. A smart play for Martin Loving. He felt Dubchitz on his hip the whole time, knew that he was at a disadvantage, just kept going to the rim. Foul number three on Dubchitz. Both from 
the free throw line. Takes his personal tally up to 16. The deficit is 11 from Leicester's perspective. Sharma again working hard on the offensive glass. Good energy from Josh Sharma. He knew he had good inside position in space with the play. Good anticipation of where the ball was going to be and an easy put back finish for him. Van Oostrup just got his arms tangled up with Wheeler there. We talked about London being over the limit. So three throws again for Leicester here. Third personal on Van Oostrup. See there, the contact after Wheeler coming off that screen. Leicester's free throw shooting not quite as accurate in the second half as it was in the first. Well, that's exactly the same foul there. Although Whelan saying he, he had my arm trapped, but once you're in there, it always goes against a defensive player. Spot again, loving to the hole with the flush. Wow, he wanted to see his options. He surveyed the court and took it himself. The defense came over and take off Mark Loving. And that's what we want to see from Mark Loving getting out of the break, being aggressive, being assertive, finishing strong at the rim. London calling a timeout here. 13 points to the good. Well, one of two games uh, tonight. The other one going on in Newcastle. If you don't want to know the score, Drew, take the headphones off now. Newcastle is 64, Manchester Giants 84. Ramon Fletcher with 19 points, 9 assists and 5 rebounds against Newcastle. That, that, that just sounds good coming out of your mouth, but I mean, how long is Ramon Fletcher going to continue to do this? I mean, year in, year out, he just continues to put up numbers. Unfortunately, against my Newcastle Eagles. Former Leicester player led the scoring for Manchester William Lee with 22 points and 11 rebounds up in the Virgin Mercy's Wow, second game for Giants. Another double-double for him. Second double-double, wow. They're making noise up there already. And it doesn't get any easier for my Eagles as the London Lions fly into town on Friday night. Here's Nelson. Forward to Zubchich. Nelson along the baseline. And he ran out of room. He stepped on the line. That was great D there by Nelson Henry. Just funneling him to that baseline. Jackson. Moved on to McKenzie. Nelson Henry trying to get the rebound. Subchich coming over the back of him. Caught him around the head. And that's going to be his fourth personal foul. Good activity there from Nelson Henry. Pressing the boards himself. Bit of frustrating evening for Nelson Henry. He's someone who hasn't been able to establish himself in the game today. It's 14 minutes of play. Zero for zero from the field. So 
hasn't even been given those getting those opportunities to score the basketball and he is the most or one of the most efficient players you'll see in the league this year in the way he scores the ball there's his first point of the game and a lot of it's going to be changed for him of course he's been accustomed to playing with Gino Crano for the last two seasons to be fair, Walker's been really good when he's been on, on court and they sort of share those minutes about. Walker with the lion's share. And here's Nelson Henry trying to get a steal, instead he gets a foul. shot in the corner with a hand in his face a really difficult shot highly contested difficult spot on the floor as well but a choice of guy that makes those shots and he gets a steal here now with a little help from nelson but he gets an offensive foul decker just dropped his shoulder well the one criticism i would say of the lions right now is they haven't been able to close out this game that's the rhinos have battled they've hung around and the Lions have had the opportunities here to really put a gain in the speed and they haven't been able to do that. Whelan. Oh, a bit of a hole. Gets it away to Nelson Henry. Who lays it in? Tough move from Nelson Henry, and that's what you'll get from him. Excellent finisher around the rim. Uses all those two, three steps. Sharma could not get that. Last couple of minutes, London still with the lead, but only nine. It ought to be enough from here. Cross to Decker. Decker getting all the way to the basket and finishing, and one for Sam Decker. Wow, that is so tough. He had, he's a really good ability to that quick first step and then the control and balance to be a slide slice right in between two Leicester Rider defenders and the focus for the finish. to get it to Bob Lane off the front of the rim. Oh, almost stolen away by Zubchic. But loving able to keep it. Fires up the three. Banks it in. It may be late, but the bank is still open. Wow. <laughs> Sometimes you need a little bit of fortune. And loving gets one to go. Using a little clock here. Good extra pass in the corner. Zubchich is three. That's going to be a foul on Sharma with a push in the back. And that's going to be two free throws. And that's going to be his fifth personal foul. He hasn't played much in this game. Fouls have limited him to only 14, but he certainly active when he was out there. Oh, he was, yeah, he was excellent. I think his activity speaks volumes. And even that last foul, I. Didn't see a lot of contact in there, but again, you don't know oh, what hands are doing down low. But no, he has been a bright spark for them. An active second Many, many coaches in the BBL, something they can only dream of. They needed those two free throws. London taking time out of the game. 
just getting themselves to a second victory. Kufos to the finger roll, and he gets it. <laughs> That's really good mobility there from the big man. He was able to adjust his body and scoop that shot up there to finish. Oh, Loving loses the handle. Came off the foot of uh, Decker, so it'll be a Leicester ball. Nelson Henry back to McKenzie. This is the three. Decker with the rebound, and that will do it. London will dribble it out here. And they've led all the game. They couldn't really shake Leicester off, but they've had a double figure lead for most of it. They've started the season with two good wins for London Lions. They have indeed 2 0 to start the season. Perfect starting. This game in particular, 11 point difference at half time. And we were no different at the end. That second half was, was there was no separating the two teams. 23 23 at the end of the third, and then 19 19 a piece at the end of the fourth quarter. But again, a very intense, good defensive set and display for the London Lions. Well, you have to go back to 2010, the last time Leicester lost their opening league game of the season. Beaten here today by the London Lions. But I think Rob Paternostro will take some positives out of that. He's still got a point guard to come. His team played uh, hard all the way through, even though they couldn't ever quite drag the Lions back in. I think so, Dan. It was a well-coached game as well from Rob Paternostro. The plan was to, to match the intensity of the London Lions, to hang in there. They did it. They made shots where they needed to as well. And I thought at times they had a breakdown defensively, but that only gets stronger and, and, and more succinct as the season goes on. Well, the London Lions have won 89-78. We'll throw it back over to Nat. Yep, 2-0. and oh. A solid start for this all-star Lions side. And Kieran Achara looking at that game Leicester kept in it they kept hanging around but at no point did they look like they would get right back in it did they yeah it was a, it was a funny one it reminded me a lot of the Sheffield game last week you know London did what they needed to do they're still you know, still got a lot of things to clean up but the, the, the other team Leicester this week Sheffield last week just they stuck with it you know they're, they're resilient players and uh, you know, Leicester still have another point guard to add so I expect them to be better, but I also expect London to step up a gear too. What were the key things that impressed you most tonight about London's performance? Going back to the basic again, I still feel that they had a team that you know, we talk about their depth, but the, the, the scoring is well spread, they're moving the ball, they, they do a really good job of cleaning up the glass, so you know, Leicester did think a lot of offensive rebound. On, on the flip side, London Lions were attacking the board, they're so big, so tall, so long relentless on the glass and that, that, that gives them those second chance opportunities all right uh sam decker was brilliant last week he was our mvp guess what he's doubled down a double double for him and a double mvp as well he's courtside now with drew thanks Matt. sam an mvp performance you filled up the stat sheet how was you able to get in such a groove tonight uh honestly uh we were really aggressive as a group early um we got some early stops this first two three minutes and then it led to easy layups, easy dunks. Um, our big screened really well early, and uh, they got some easy looks. And when the other guys start feeling themselves and getting going, it opens the court for everyone else. Uh, so it wasn't one set thing, but um, you know we were able to find some easy looks early, and then it got us rolling, and I filled in when I could. And similar to last week, it wasn't just you. It was a collective effort. Just talk about the contributions you had throughout the team. Well, I mean, it, I mean, look at halftime. Um, we were looking at the score sheet, and it was, you know, eight, eight, six, 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 five, 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 four. You know, um, you know, we can be a collective group like that. And I said in the locker room, you know, we have ten guys that on other teams had to score 18, 20, 22 points. You know, on a given night, it's hard sometimes when you have a full group like that. Um, but when you find your identity and uh, find joy in other ways, we can become really dangerous. But it's going to take time. It's early. Play two games and. Um, we got to, you know, get into those roles and have fun doing it. Well, finally, touching on that point with a team full of talent and as the leader of the team, how do you keep everyone focused on the main goal? It's a great question. Um, 
just emphasizing it every day, right? Um, take it tomorrow off, give our body some rest. Sunday got to be locked in, you know, whether we're in there for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. Um, we have to keep get it going up, you know, average teams stay here. Great teams keep trying to build each day. Even if the shot's not falling, even if the other team's hitting everything, you got to try to build up. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to put British basketball on the map. Um, that's our goal. Thanks for your time, yep. Sam. Thank Great you. effort. Thank you. Well, if that is Sam Decker's mission, uh, it is starting impressively. Also, uh, extra points for complimenting Drew, knowing that he's probably going to be asked a lot of questions by Drew Laskus and getting on his right side earlier. Definitely. Let's look at tonight's performance then. 18 points, 11 boards. He had six assists as well. So he was on course for a triple-double in the running for play of the day too more of that later just picked up where he le left off from last week really. yeah just making the right plays you know la last week he, he didn't rebound the ball great but he's, he stepped up his rebounding tonight but he's not really forcing anything there was maybe a couple of shots that he was uh, kind of like heat check shots in the third and fourth quarter but other than that he's letting the game come to him and attack him when he needs to there was actually one situation he got an and one down the end and he, he said this is easy and i think he, he i think he would say it to himself because he he doesn't need to overcomplicate things. He just needs to play basketball the way he knows how to play. And he's a showman, isn't he? I mean, you saw it tonight. Talked about that intensity. It was from the get-go. He was right in the thick of that. And it really hyped up this crowd. It gets him, no, it's motivating him. It's motivating the crowd. It's motivating his teammates. Uh, 28 points. The damage done in the first quarter. Talking about the intensity. Sam Deck was talking about the intensity there from the get-go. It's got to put a smile on the face of his coach, Ryan Schmidt. He's courtside now with Drew. Coach, a huge win against a quality opponent. How would you describe tonight's performance? That was really good. Uh, I think we did a good job, obviously. Like, listen, th those guys are the champs for a reason. And, you know, you can see you've got to put them away. They're not going to go go down. We had multiple times where I felt like it was like a 10, 12-point lead, and they would just claw back in. And we got to kind of regroup and regather. Uh, but, again, it's, it's you know fun matchup. I, I like the progress we made. We talked about when we were playing in Spain the other night. You know, can we get these two to three minute good stretches we have to kind of drag it now can we get to four and five and I felt like we did that a couple different occasions tonight which was good and the culture seems to be very positive with this group how do you establish it as coach of a team with so much talent I think the biggest thing was when we put this roster together the number one thing we looked at was character to be honest with you and, and again these are these are really good guys yes they're very talented um, but again through the recruiting process we wanted a good group we know again getting a, a whole new team to gel is going to be tough um, but to give these guys credit, like they've come in, they're very selfless, uh, they've done the work, and you know, we've got to continue to build. Finally, just a quick word on Sam Decker's performance. I, I thought he was fantastic, and I think he did a really good job of kind of letting the game come to him. You know, in the first half, he wasn't getting as many touches, but there wasn't frustration. It was more about the team than him. You know, we talked about, again, like the ball's going to find you, and I thought there was a little bit of a stretch in that second quarter right before halftime where we were kind of hunting shots a little bit. He spoke up in the locker room and just said, hey, listen, you know, I know a lot of us are, are used to kind of having to drop 20 and 25 a night, but again, we've got to trust each other and trust the offense. And, and again, he's going to guys like him are always going to find touches. Um, but again, another outstanding performance. Great win, coach. Thanks for your time. All right, thanks, guys. It's a great question from from Drew because if we looked year on year, and you and I were saying, in uh, as we were watching the game, a lot of the questions, conversations we were having at the top of this show were very similar to the first game that we did at the Copper Box last season. A lot of big stars, players coming in. I think the level is even higher in terms of the the range, the depth of recruitment but the culture piece is key we picked it up from the get-go last week against Sheffield this team seems together they seem unified they definitely do seem together but at this moment in time I, I always believe that togetherness is a lot easier when you're winning you know when they get to European competition as well maybe some of the games are not going their way are they going to stay together stay, stay cohesive what, what coach mentioned there about uh, Decker talking about sharing the ball not, not having to force things we, you know we, we're a team they don't need to be those individuals. If they can keep that mindset through the tough times as well, I think they're going to be unstoppable. He was talking about performances from across the team. Let's look at Tomislav Zubcic, who uh, was the leading scorer for the Lions, chiefly because he took a hell of a lot of shots, because he's only shooting around 30%. But when he hits, you can see the talent that's there. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. He's such a versatile player. You know, there he's got Mo Walker guarding him, Mo Walker's in, in, in the paint. He steps out and knocks him in the three. He runs the floor so well for a big. And that tires you out. You know, as a defensive player, you have to chase back every single time. You know, that's very tough. He's got those touches, like I said, around the rim. I think he shot 12 threes today. But he can score inside and out. And that's, that's always dangerous. 
Okay, tough beat for the champs, but uh, Coach Padanostra, I'm sure, will be looking at the positives from that performance. Well, let's find out. He's courtside now with Drew. Coach, it's early days, so we know there's better performances on the horizon for the riders, but after reflection, what's most urgent for your squad moving forward? Well, I thought we ran into a team that was pretty fired up tonight. That first quarter really hurt us, and we expected that, 28 on the board. I think turnovers, uh, that was the key for the game today coming in. And I think, you know, they had 15 off turnovers in that first half where they really jumped out on us. I thought we competed on the defensive end pretty well. It's just hard to, you know, play defense when you're turning the ball over. Offensively, you know, not too bad tonight, but we still, you know, have to do a little bit better job there. Look, they're a really good team, a uh, huge team, uh, tough on the boards. Um, we'll learn a lot from this game going forward, definitely. And your new point guard was sitting on the edge of his seat. Just talk about the decision to sit him tonight. Oh, yeah, just got here. I mean, he got here late uh, on Wednesday, and then Thursday, you know, he was just a light workout. I'm not going to do that to him. Uh, it's been done to me before, and um, it's tricky, and I think it's more important with uh, 36 league games to go, or 35 now, I believe, um, that um, we have him for, for the long haul. So um, he'll get a good week of practice in this week. We're looking forward to having him out on the floor, and then, uh, you know, he should be ready to go next week. Well, Coach, it's been done to us all. Thanks for your time, and see you guys bounce back. Thank yeah. you. So, early days, as Drew suggested in that interview, but how significant a win is this for the Lions? I, I think it's good. It takes the monkey off their back. You know, <laughs> right now, people expect in London to win. This is a big pressure game. You know, Leicester Riders are the champs. They, they, they are renowned for winning. So, it was good for, I guess, for a confidence boost for the team to understand that they are heading in the right direction. Well, we talked about positives the riders could take from uh, that performance. Mark Loving, perhaps the, the pick of the bunch. Mo Walker, we talked about at half time. Of course, Whelan in the mix as well. But Loving was the leading scorer for the riders. 21 points and shooting at a 70% clip as well. We always talk about how smooth his jump shot right. is. You know, he's creating his own shot there. But I think that for me, he's, he's, it looks like he's added a little bit of muscle in the, in the off season. You know, he's, he had this wiry strength already, but there, that's, that's, a, that's a sign of strength. You know, good hang time, big seven footer in front of him, good finish. So it's good to see Loving getting back in the mix, playing a defensive role there, coming into, into offense and finishing the rim. He's going to be a big player for the rest of this season. Yeah, and Leicester are going to be right in the mix. There's no doubt about that. Don't read too much into this win, impressive as it was from the London Lions. And speaking of impressive, play of the day, there were a number of key candidates. I mentioned uh, that Sam Decker was in the mix as well. But you go for Josh Sharma. This was ridiculous. You know, we're number 20 like I did. Play completely different game. <laughs> you know, he's played above the rim there. To be able to catch that, execute that, finish with, with, with style, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say I'm going to, I'm going to hold like, it off because that's probably going to be a, a, a next week play. So, yeah. but that, that was a, that was a great, great finish. Could it bring back memories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When that's I a... used to play, when I used to lift trophies. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you went there. I didn't go there. You went there. Uh, other game in the BBL this evening is one other game. Uh, I should say, and a comprehensive win for the Manchester Giants. Uh, of course, Vince McCauley, the former Lions head coach, now in charge. Uh, of the Giants, difficult beat for the Eagles in their first game of the season. William Lee, the former rider, double-double uh, for him, 22 points and 11 boards. Lots of action the rest uh, across the BBL the rest of the weekend, including Bristol taking on Sheffield on Sunday at Caledonia versus, sorry, in the Cup, the first BBL Cup game rolling there, match to Plymouth in the league. Cheshire, Newcastle as well. You can watch all of those games on the BBL YouTube channel. So looking at some of those names there on the screen, we've seen who we think are going to be the key, the chief title contenders this evening. What about the chasing pack here? Who else you know what? Make? It is so up for grabs. The only thing I know right now is Drew Lasker was saying that Eagles will not make the playoffs again for a second year. I think that's really, really tough. I, I think Eagles are going to be improving as time progresses. But... I, honestly, it's, it's literally a, a toss of a coin. You, you have no idea. The, it's such a competitive league this year. Every team is looking to go. It's just going to be an exciting year. Let's, let's see how it plays out. And it's been great to be here at the Cobble Box with a packed crowd who were up for it as well. And uh, the Lions entertained them and then some sort of bodes well for the rest of the season. There is more where that came from as far as we're concerned. Back in action once again. Friday night basketball rolling through the season. And we're taking our first look at Vince McCauley and the Manchester Giants taking on the Cheshire Phoenix. We're on air, 7.30, a 7.45 tip. Brilliant stuff, Kieran. I hope you've enjoyed it at home. The Lions, well, we figured they'd be entertainers. They're certainly living up to that billing. We'll see you next Friday. Bye for now.